had recently did a video and in the comments we were somehow drifting over to talking about taxes and I made some tongue-in-cheek comment about the percentage of tax that we pay and uh, a guy wrote to me saying actually Rob that's utter bollocks you need to rethink it Ned and to be honest he was absolutely right because I said those things without context now he pointed out a report to me and the report was about when we reach the tax-free date, that is, the day in the year in which we're working for ourselves and no longer working for the government. And this report said that after 153 days, we actually start working for ourselves. Therefore, the date that we work for ourselves, I think it was July the 13th or something like that, I forget which. But it just talked about days. It didn't give the days any context. When you start to think about that a little bit, ask yourself, which days do they mean? Do they mean actual days, or do they mean working days? Because in a year, of course, we get um, two days a week free. So out of our 356 days in a year, 104 of them are the weekend. So we, in fact, are working for um, 356, 104, 252 days is what we would actually work for in a year. Now, if we're working 153 of those for the government, it means we're only working 99 for ourselves. So, it doesn't look so good, suddenly. So the context of something is really, really important when any anybody ever says something to you. Now, Bill Bryson does something on this, on secondhand smoking. It's in one of his books. I'm afraid I can't remember which one. But he talks about the context of the secondhand smoking um, stats. Now, the statistic, apparently, for secondhand smoking is uh, the incidence of cancer caused by secondhand smoking is 1 in 50,000. What that means is if you get 50,000 people and stuff them in their room and smoke at them, one of them is bound to get cancer. And that sounds terrible. And, and yes, it does, yes. But uh, Bryson said the problem with that is it's out of context. And he did a little bit of research and he found that the incidence of cancer from eating two carrots a week is, da-da, one in 50,000. So it seems like a terrible figure in isolation. When you start to look at it in context, that figure suddenly changes its meaning. Now, nobody's suggesting we should stuff a load of people in a smoke-filled room to prove anything, or that secondhand smoking isn't harmful. Yes, it is. But what we're saying here, or what I'm saying here, is that look at the context in which something is said, not just the thing in itself. So when somebody tells you that it's 153 days um, that you work for the government and the rest of the time that you work for yourself, have a look at the context, particularly in something like that, because the rest of the time is so vague. So you need to be aware of context in things like that, like um, the work, the tax situation, the smoking situation, and especially when it comes to interpretations of what graphene can do. So when you look at the headline of something, and it says, oh, graphene can generate electricity from salt water, oh, graphene is stronger than steel, all that kind of stuff, or graphene can conduct at the speed of light, then you have to look at the context in which that's been said. And when you read behind that to get a little bit of the context of what it is, you find that it's not that useful, because graphene is only as strong as steel if it's about five microns across, something like that. You don't build a lot of bridges five, mi five microns high. So when you look at the context of stuff, suddenly things start to make a bit more sense. Anyway, I hope that helped and um, thank you very much for watching.